All right, well, good afternoon, um, everyone. Thanks for joining us today at the Produce Water Rulemaking Stakeholders Meeting. Um, I apologize for the little delay. I'm having a little trouble seeing to make sure that um, we have all our attendees in the room, but it looks like we've got um, 10 panelists uh, here from ECMC and our AAG's office and uh, about 45 uh, attendees in the meeting today. So I wanna start by thanking everyone for joining us today. Um, as we go through the meeting, um, just one note uh, to the attendees. Um, when we get to the uh, point where we're um, reaching out for, for questions and suggestions and, and discussion, um, I'd ask that you raise your hand and we'll elevate um, individuals as they raise their hand to um, engage, or um, you can also chat questions in and we'll we'll follow along that way. Um, so unless there are any other um, sort of meeting housekeeping issues that I need to take care of, and I'm, I'm looking to um, our host, Jenny Lehman, if she has anything that I need to be aware of um, or any of our attorneys before I get started, um, we'll go ahead and dive in. All good on my end. We're good to go. Great. Thank you. Um, well, again, thank you all for, for joining us today. I know that with the uh, cumulative impacts rulemaking um, that's been going on, um, a lot of you may um, be a little fatigued, but um, hang in there. We've got we've got a few more rulemakings to go this year. And so um, this, this one, of course, is slated for uh, December. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and go through the agenda um, and um, dive, dive into the meeting. So I'm going to start by going through a few introductory notes and, uh, and some sort of administrative stuff, walk through the schedule of the rulemaking. Um, I will present on the statutory requirements and then go through the various series that are included in the notice on these draft rules. And then we'll dive into um, direct engagement with with our stakeholders who are here. And, and again, thank you very much for being here. Um, I'd like to I'd like to approach this um, stakeholder um, engagement in sort of two two phases. The first being really um, questions related to the content, meaning, or intent of the of the draft rules, and then the second would be looking for really specific suggestions for for improvement. And everybody obviously would have a different um, view of what improvement might look like. But um, from your perspective, what what improvements we could make, uh, what we may be missing, what we may need to address um, to be more specific. So again, in those in those um, sections, I'm going to be looking for very um, specific in engagement from you all. Um, and and although this meeting is scheduled for an hour. Um, we can certainly stay longer if we're if we're really um, getting into into some great discussion. I don't want to cut anything off just because we reach an arbitrary time uh, deadline. So, um, by way of introduction, um, I just wanted to first call out um, an uh, inadvertent omission of of one paragraph of the rules when we first noticed them on September twentieth. And that was 905C6C, and I'll discuss that that section later. But I wanted to um, let everyone know that the the rules that went out on September 20th um, had a paragraph omitted, and then um, we re we we amended the notice um, on the 26th of September, so last Thursday. We updated the filing with the Secretary of State and the Department of Regulatory Affairs, and did send out the new. Um, the new the the amended rules um on that day and also included them in our hearings folder uh so that they are available so please just as we as we go forward make sure you're using the right version of those as far as the schedule goes um you know we published the straw dog uh for feedback and and again thank you for those of you who provided um feedback that was really important to the drafting of of the of the rules that were noticed on the 20th um, and then, um, obviously, this stakeholder meeting is sort of the start of our, our real formal processes. 
And uh, I want to call everyone's attention to the deadline for signing up as a party status. Um, this is, that will be this Thursday at um, at 5 p.m. Uh, October 4th. Um, Pre-hearing conference or case management order uh, will will be set for October 11th. Um, Pre-hearing statements will be due November 8th. Responses due uh, uh, November 22nd, and I'm not sure on the calendar how that fits in with Thanksgiving, but just looking at that date, seems like it might be pretty close. Um, and then all pre-filed written testimony will be due um, December 6th in advance of the December 11th through 19th uh, hearing dates. Um, so it's a busy schedule. Um, and then just other administrative items as we move through. Um, wanted to call out the, the contacts for folks. Um, I, I'll be the continue to be the lead staff contact on this for technical questions, clarifications, any language suggestions you all have, um, other stakeholder engagement on the technical side. Um, our AAG's office contact lead is Tessa Ward. We appreciate her help. Um, she'll take legal questions and legal issues. Um, and also, folks, if you're working through an attorney to um, to set up your stakeholder, you know, if you want to have a meeting, but you're working through an attorney, please go ahead and have your attorney contact Tessa instead of me. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to operators and, and technical folks directly. But if, if there's an attorney involved, I'd just prefer it go directly through Tessa. So thanks for that. Um, our hearings officer is Matthew Berman. So any procedural questions or scheduling questions, that will be through him. And then um, I just wanted to also call out the um, director of the Produce Water Consortium as a contact for, um, for that group and whether, you know, folks, as they're going through this, if they read the Produce Water Consortium's recommendation um, and have questions on that, that would be Hope Dalton. And if they have a desire to engage with that consortium, then that's, that's also through her. Um, and uh, at this time, I'll also say, give a big shout out and thank you to the Colorado Produced Water Consortium for the, the work that they've done over the past year. Um, it's been pretty amazing uh, to see that process play out and their recommendation document was pretty important to our, our work here. Um, so before we move into um, the main body of the presentation, uh, does anybody have any questions on those sort of introductory or administrative um, uh, topics that I've laid out? And Jenny, you'll have to help me because again, I'm I feel like I'm uh, working with one hand behind my back because I'm I'm sharing my screen. So I've got a little a lot of little tiny windows um, that I can't really see. Greg, we have a request to go back to the dates and deadline slide for a moment. You bet. Thank you. And this presentation obviously will be available on our, um, you know, in our hearings file on the on the website. So um, you'll all have access to this as we move forward. Um, Elias, I guess I'll ask a question right now, or or maybe uh, since Matthew is here as well. Um, are are these dates set in stone? Do any of them have the potential to move? It, it, how does that work? Um, the party sign up deadline is set in stone. That's Friday, October fourth at five p.m. And the case management order is, or pre-hearing conference date is also set in stone. We'll have a little bit of leeway, but we really would not like to move from this schedule given what else the commission is working with. So the answer is close to set in stone. Yes. Sorry it, for the roundabout answer. It's it's firmly setting cement right now. Um, I appreciate that. And thank you for your clarification. Also, I believe I said Thursday, October 4th, and that is Friday, October 4th. So thank you for that clarification. All right, then. Um, with that, um, moving in, into the body of, of my presentation so that we can get move forward into our discussion uh, period. Um, so first, I'm not going to go through the statute. I am assuming that all who are here 
are interested enough to have read the statute. And if you haven't, um, you have access to the statute either, um, you know, through the Colorado Register or on uh, ECMC's webpage. So um, please do so. Essentially, the statute requires that we set some rules or that the commission adopt rules. And the statute does make some specific recommendation for what those rules must include. Um, as staff, we have tried very hard to honor um, the specific language of the statute and, uh, and make sure that we're um, putting it into rules in a manner that is workable um, as, we, as we look forward to implementing these. Um, so those are just the statutory sections, um, 3460, 135, section five that pertain to, um, pertain to this rulemaking. Um, and so now I will go into a little bit more detail about the draft rules and, and, and provide an overview of the draft rules. Again, working um, through 100 series, 300 series, 400 series, and 900 series. So the 100 series, as you all know, is our definitions where we provide, uh, you know, def defined terms to be used throughout the rules. Um, so significantly... In, in this rulemaking, we are adopting very closely the statutory definition of produced water. We defined the term recycled produced water, and we did it for the, you know, for ease of use throughout the rules. The statute refers to recycling and or recycled and reused produced water. We found that that term was a little bit cumbersome and provided um, a lack of clarity due to is it reused produced water or is it recycled produced water or is it recycled and reused produced water? Um, and so we found that for clarity, the, the most important thing would be to, um, or, or the, the best thing would be to just define recycled produced water, use that term throughout our rules. Um, and, and we also, um, you know, so that basically means reconditioned um, for reuse or reused without recon reconditioning. So it's very close to the definition of recycled and reused produced water that's in the statute, but we felt like it was more clear to use the, to simplify it to recycled produced water. Sorry, I went on way too long on that. Um, we also, in that definition, we provided a, um, we added a provision for equivalency. And um, this is based on recommendations received from the Colorado Produced Water Consortium, that there was a strong desire to um, allow for the recycled um, portion, recycled produced water portion to be established through other sources of water that may not be considered fresh water. Now, fresh water we've defined to be anything but produced water, but there are some things, for example, if um, produced water or if water was pumped from a a class two underground injection well and then reused in um, in uh, in completions operation, that might be an equivalent of recycled produced water. Um, we did remove a term that was not used uh, anywhere in our rules that that was called to our attention during the straw dog pro process. So the 300 series, um, we updated um, a, a few rules in the 300 series. Primarily, these changes clarify um, the applicability of the specific sections to freshwater as newly defined. Um, these are directly related to specific requirements of the Form 2A and 2B. Um, so the Form 2B used to require a section a discussion about recycling and reusing produced water, um, but we felt like it was um, unnecessary and and we we moved it elsewhere in the rules. Um, the four hundred series, the statutory requirement for monthly require reporting by well has already been operationalized in the form seven. And so this rule simply codifies the requirements and clarifies the language based on the new definitions. Again, it, for the Form 47, the statutory requirement for quarterly reporting by location has already been operationalized in the Form 47. 
Um, so this rule again, 431E, um, simply codifies the requirements and clarifies the, the language there um, based on our new definitions. The statute does require the adoption of vehicle mileage reporting and ECMC's straw dog, um, we proposed extensive and comprehensive uh, reporting that included um, service vehicles, equipment delivery, uh, setup vehicles, vendors. Um, but when we reviewed the feedback that we received um, on the straw dog and, and further considered this situation, it was apparent that many of those vehicle miles would be required uh, regardless of what water management strategies were being used, you know, whether it was fresh water management, produced water management, or recycled produced water management. And additionally, it's apparent that the most significant vehicle impacts, including emissions and traffics, will continue to be from trucks uh, used directly for transporting water, whether that's, again, fresh produced or recycled produced water. So therefore, the draft rules um, are narrowly limited to those transport trucks, whether loaded or empty. Um, we've been advised, ECMC has been advised that operators can and sometimes already do obtain miles from their vendors as part of their invoicing process. Uh, so this appeared to be the, the most effective way to um, meet that statutory requirement for reporting. Moving on to the 900 series, um, Waste management plans are required with each oil and gas development plan. Each oil and gas development plan that's filed after uh, January 1st, 2026 will be required to include a commitment to recycle produced water in the waste management plan. Um, each waste management plan will also include a produced water recycling and reuse plan that specifies a number of important details that must be described in the plan. The list is based on the need for sufficient data to support the commission's decision as to whether or not to issue an oil and gas development plan um, and also reflects stakeholder feedback on the on the straw dog rules. Uh, one new item that we've added is the description of any water the operator proposes to use to satisfy the requirements for the equivalency for recycled produced water. So this is where they would describe where they're getting um, another water source and why that is an equivalent um, to recycled produced water. All right, so um, this, this slide is a biggie. Um, so 905C6 incorporates the Colorado Produced Water Consortium's recommendation for an iterative and consistent increase in the use of recycled produced water. These rules adopt the consortium's recommendations outright with respect to the timing and recycling rates. Not notably though, the, produced rule, the proposed rules apply the first target um, recycling rate to oil and gas development plans filed after January 1st, 2026, whereas the, the next three targets will apply op to operational periods regardless of when they were permitted. So this prevents operators from rushing to lock in a low rate, for example. Um, operators are now on notice that any completion operations beginning in 2030, um, regardless of when they are permitted, will need to utilize 10% recycled produced water in their completions and can be begin to plan today accordingly for that, for that before. So again, that first time period is based on when the oil and gas development plan is submitted and then the other three time periods are based on when the operations occur. Um, and then, you know, again, I encourage you to review the consortium's recommendation. It's a it's a incredibly well thought out document that um, does a great job of providing support for um, for these time periods and and the recycling uh, rates that are that are highlighted there. Um, so next, because we recognize that an operator's plan for recycling and reuse um, could involve the development of the first well on a pad with all fresh water and then gradually increasing to use, you know, more and more and more fresh water or more and more um, recycled produced water across the pad, um, we, we've allowed for the um, compliance to be demonstrated and averaged over an occupation on an oil and gas location. 
and using the concept of occupation um, it provides you know flexibility in that sense but also um, reduces the risk of an operator not complete completing their proposed plan and, and therefore underutilizing uh, recycled produced water in their development. And then lastly, and this is the provision that was inadvertently uh, left out of the initial publication of the draft rules, the rules modify and codify the language currently in place on every form two approved for drilling and completion operations that requires a, a legal source of water for the, for the operations. So if you've received a form two application for permit to drill uh, recently, you can look down at the bottom of that and there's a, a, a paragraph that describes um, that a legal source of water must be obtained for the, for the work. And uh, this, we just worked with um, Division of Water Resources to um, update that language um, with, you know, sort of more uh, current, um, current language. And, and, you know, as a result, the, the form two would be updated to reflect um, these rules uh, if they are adopted. Um, lastly, as required by statute, these rules include a prohibition of the construction of new centralized produced water storage or treatment facilities in disproportionately impacted communities. And again, that's, um, you know, right out of the requirement right out of the statute. Um, so it looks like I did all right. I didn't want to spend too much time going through those. Um, hopefully that that did, um, you know, provide a, a decent overview of of what the rules are intending to accomplish and uh, and and a little bit of the why. Um, again, we've, uh, we've also got, not again, I haven't stated this yet, uh, in the hearings folder, there is a statement of basis and purpose available. Um, and obviously that'll be updated as we um, go through and the commission, um, you know, begins their process as well. Um, unless any of my team have anything to add to the presentation and information that's just been provided, um, we will move into the stakeholder engagement um, time. And I am not seeing anything, so we will. Um, so again, I wanna open up with, um, you know, sort of really specific questions specifically related to content, meaning and intent of the draft rules. And we will do our best to answer those questions. Um, and again, I am limited in my ability to see things. So um, I'm hoping that um, I will get some help from, from our team on this. Um, I do see the first question, how are you defining occupation for purposes of meeting the percent requirements? And so um, I, I may need some help from our location assessment uh, folks on the on the call, but my understanding is that the Form 2B does talk about drilling occupations. And so if an occupation would be, um, you know, the, the initial, let's say the initial, let's say a, a site is permitted for eight wells and there are initial, um, they plan to drill them in, in blocks of four, like four wells one year and four wells the next year, drill and complete. So that would define their occupation as those first four wells. And then following the completion of the last well on that pad, the operator would report to um, ECMC that, um, you know, their, their occupation is complete. And we would then take a look at those four uh, five A's kind of as a group instead of um, individually to determine the, the compliance with the, with the recycling rates. Um, the next question I see here is the, are the reduction requirements statewide or by drilling basin and why? So um, the, requirements are um, are statewide. Um, the reason for that, well, several reasons for that. Um, the currently we know there are basins where recycling and reuse is being conducted at a higher 
um, at a higher rate than what we're what we're proposing here. Um, however, those basins are doing that, um, you know, for operational reasons, for economic reasons, um, geographic reasons, it, without the rules already, and, and that's been going on. That's been standard practice in, for example, the Peons Basin for some time. Um, we also recognize that the opportunities for improving the overall statewide outlook um, are more confined to, for example, the DJ Basin, where um, the recycling rates currently are very low, and are you know, and and the water use volume is very high, and so we attempted to focus or, or apply rules statewide that would have the most impact in the DJ Basin and improve the overall statewide picture the most by improving that sort of significant volume rate. So I hope that that addresses um, sort of why we, we approached it the way we did there. The next question I have is how will recycled water percentages be verified? Um, so the recycled water percentages will be verified by reviewing the Form 5 uh, completed interval report. Um, and again, we can we can review that on a well by well basis or over a drilling occupation, depending on how the operator has proposed that. Um, you know, if they've proposed occupations, multiple occupations in their form 2B, or if we are looking at a well by well basis. Um, what if an operator doesn't meet their targets? Um, are we have enforcement authority through our 500 series rules and we can exercise um, those in, those enforcement mechanisms? Um, let's see. Next question is, this is not my area of expertise. Whoops, it just jumped on me. Um, this is not my area of expertise, but do you expect an issue with operators disclosing their fresh water seller's name and address sources? Seems these are confidential agreements, but not sure if this has already been addressed. Um, that's, a, that's a question we received also during the straw dog process. Um, that requirement is currently in existence in our rules and has been a requirement of our oil and gas development plans since January 15th, 2021. And the way that is operationalized is we also do have a confidentiality provision in our, I believe, our 200 series rules. And so if operators have specific information that is confidential, um, they can submit a redacted version, request confidentiality status. They also have to submit a unredacted version of that information to staff that staff can review with our attorneys and ensure that it meets the requirements of being held con in confidence. And then essentially there is a, there is a, um, uh, a redacted version that's, that's made publicly available so that the, um, you know, sensitive personal identifying information isn't included in, in those, in those documents. So that, that has been working very well now for, for a number of years and, and we'll continue to, um, do that in the same manner. Um, let's see. Will reuse of reclaimed water for oil and gas operations pursuant to WQCC Reg 84 be considered by ECMC as being equivalent means for reducing freshwater usage? Um, so that will be ultimately up to the commission during the OGDP review process, if that is something that is proposed by an oil and gas operator. Um, I think that's an important point to, um, you know, develop further as this, as this goes in. I mean, I can't, I can't say one way or another, which, which way the needle would, would move on that. But I think it is an important point to bring up um, you know, with the commission uh, during during the rulemaking proceedings, because you know, it, if that's an important consideration for some, then then the commission can provide staff guidance as to how to how to implement that.
All right, this next question is fairly lengthy. So uh, I'm gonna take a drink of water before I dive into it. Um, House Bill 23, 1242 provides that the commission should adopt rules to require a rapid and substantial reduction in the use of fresh water and the increase in the recycling of produced water in operations. Section 13B, um, oh, that's the citation. The proposed rules only address operator side. The proposed rules omit revisions or proposed changes to address how to provide supply of water for recycling, reuse. To achieve the goal of the statute, we need revision to rule 803C and rule 803F34 to remove total injected volume limitations for disposal wells to assure enough water is available to supply reuse and recycling programs. Um, so that question would actually, or that comment would actually be better um, served in the, in the next section, um, which is okay. Um, that, you know, where I was going to ask for specific, um, you know, specific rules that need to be addressed. I, I do appreciate that. Um, and, and I would, I would say, you know, definitely if you have specific language that, um, you know, you feel should be or needs to be included in order to make the rules successful, um, you know, we, we would certainly welcome receiving that feedback. <clears throat> uh, next question, if an entire county is a DI community, uh, are you considering any off-ramps for the prohibition? For example, if a local government wanted a treatment facility, could it override the prohibition? Um, so the statute, the statutory provision, um, I will say is, is pretty specific. Um, that said, I, I think that it would be, you know, I recognize that it is, um, challenging in areas where the geographic um, layout of a um, census block um, includes a lot of area where there are no residents, um, you know, and so you've got a large area covered by a DI community where the residents um, who live in that DI community may live in a, a fairly concentrated area. Um, the primary goal of the of the statute um, is to provide protection for those people. Um, and I think that it's important that that protection, you know, be honored. And certainly the cumulative impacts rulemaking is addressing this um, on a daily basis. Um, and that said, I, I think it's important that um, we get these rules right. And, uh, you know, I, I I would certainly be interested in considering uh, proposals for an alternative there. At this time, we have mirrored the statutory language. All right. If there's any um, further follow up on any of the questions that that were just asked, feel free and and pop them in there. If if you don't feel like I uh, answered your question, um, and and if not, we'll go ahead and I think move to um, to the next to the next portion, um, you know, which would be you know really specific feedback. And again, uh, the feedback that I got on. Um, you know, the sort of supply side, um, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing more about changes to um, 803C, 803F3 and 4 um, as, as to how those limitations on uh, total, total water disposed, um, you know, could be improved. Um, but other, other time, other suggestions, you know, for where um, we could, we could improve draft language or, um, uh, address, you know, 
in in our current rules, one thing that you know I think we still probably need to do is um, you know go back through all the rules and make sure that we've um, found any uses of fresh water and and made sure that we you know where fresh water is used and make sure that we ensure that it 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 com comports with our our new definition or is excluded from it. Uh, likewise, produced water is used throughout our rules. Make sure that it comports with our our definition of of and, and intent. So um, things like that, I think we still need to do. So there may be some cleanup additions in that sense. But um, other other places that anyone has identified. I'd also like to note that this is not your last opportunity. <laughs> um, you know, certainly, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you know, myself and others will be available um, as needed to, to chat with folks. Um, but I also don't want to use that as an out. I want to encourage folks to, to put things out here today um, because then other, other stakeholders can, can sort of chew on them as well um, and think about those, those suggestions. getting close to the hearing none but what i'm really picturing is that people are are really they're typing some long things out so right like i, I got to give you guys some time to to make sure that everybody's um you know ha has enough time to to put their thoughts on paper if 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 they have it um i'll, I'll at this time um also open up to um to any other general questions um, that are kind of go beyond those specific requests and uh, that we've had. Um, I did receive, receive one question here now. How will produce water recycling and reuse be evaluated under the new requirements for cumulative impact analysis? Um, will that be considered a reduction in adverse impacts? And, uh, you know, all I can say about that is, uh, you know, many, many or most or all of you are involved in the cumulative impacts uh, rulemaking. Um, you know that those are going on simultaneously and under deliberation. And so, um, you know, as we operationalize those two sets of rules, we we intend to make sure that they um, fold together. But at this time, it's probably a little early for me to, um, you know, I'd be out over my skis if I were to to really get into the to the how that's going to get those are going to fold together. And I'd certainly welcome specific suggestions on that as well. <clears throat> Well, Elias, I assumed that we would be going long in this meeting, um, but apparently we may be going short. There's there's no there's no rule that says we have to sit here in silence for the entire hour, is there? Not that I'm aware of. Mercifully, <laughs> excellent. Um, well, I appreciate that. I did. I did see a couple of, of thank you chats, and and you're welcome. We appreciate that. I I do hope that this this was helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, certainly for folks who have, um, you know, who are mulling these things over and 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 laying awake at night thinking about them, um, please do reach out. You can you can email me directly. You can email Tessa directly. Um, and, and, you know, we'll get back and, and consider, consider those thoughts. 
we want these, you know, obviously we want these rules to be um, the best that they can and the most effective that they can be. And so, um, you know, we've received, you know, we received, well, we received really great feedback during the the straw dog process. And I, I think we, we endeavored to um, address those concerns as best we could. Um, and so hopefully, you know, obviously we'll continue to do the same and hopefully we can, um, you know, get to get to a place where um, these are, um, you know, all we, we get all parties aligned on these rules. So, um, yeah, Tessa, can you drop your email in there? I forgot that you are not listed on our website. All of the ECMC staff are listed on our website. And so um, I hurriedly put the contact slide together and, and didn't get everybody's email address in there. So, and, and thanks for that. I will actually update that with email addresses uh, before I go to, uh, before we publish this into the file. So that's a great comment. Awesome. Well, everyone, uh, again, I want to thank you very much um, for joining today, for for bringing some questions. Um, hopefully, hopefully, you got some answers out of us and and some more information. And again, um, you know, this is the beginning of our road together. Um, I appreciate you all, and uh, and and I appreciate you know all the work that that all of you are putting into um, this effort, the cumulative impacts effort, and and the other rulemakings we have uh, going on as well. So, um, thank you. With that, Jenny, I think we can close out the meeting.